Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I am going to be giving a thrifted side table a French country makeover. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I found this sweet little table at the thrift store for just $3. I thought that it was super cute and had a lot of potential. After cleaning, I'm going to be giving this piece two coats of a custom mix that I created from Dixie Belle's Mint Julep Chalk Mineral Paint and Cashmere Limited Edition Full Color. I mixed them together in equal parts and came up with this lovely light sage green color. I'm going to be painting this entire table in this custom color except for the little drawer. I am going to be using a synthetic brush today. Synthetic brushes mean that you get less brush strokes. I'm using my oval small for this. The particular shape of the bristles makes it a lot easier to paint spindles. You can see that I'm brushing back and forth, up and down, and this allows me to reach tricky areas and to limit the drips, I am keeping a very small amount of paint on my brush. I've also heard that people actually use a sponge or a cloth to actually paint spindles to make that a bit easier. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I usually do smaller thrift flips, but I actually started out doing furniture. So it's nice to come back today and to do a smaller furniture project. I have to work through my stash of furniture. I have a shipping container I need to get rid of. So you are going to be seeing quite a few little furniture projects over the coming weeks as I try to get some of this furniture out in my shop and ready to go. When you're using chalk paint, it is a good idea to have a mister handy. However, I never use a mister or have a damp brush on my first coat. I find that it's just a good idea to get a coat of paint on my piece first and on the second coat, I can grab that mister if I'm having any trouble with brush strokes or if I want to make my paint go that little bit further. Sometimes when I'm working on a super glossy surface, I will use Dixie Belle's Bonding Primer Slick Stick to prime my piece first, but I'm finding that this paint is sticking really well. It's the chalk mineral paint range. If I was using silk, I probably would have to prime, but the chalk paint is doing a really great job today of sticking to my piece. When you're painting a furniture piece where you have to change directions with your brush strokes, it is definitely a good idea to go back in with a smoothing stroke to make sure that you smooth out your brush strokes. Here you can see that I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm painting the little drawer on all sides because you can see the front and the sides of the drawer. If you ever have trouble with your drawers closing after you've painted the sides, I recommend using a wax or Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter on the sides that are making contact and are sticking. It can really help the drawers slide in smoother. On my second coat, you can see here that it is filling in really beautifully. It is only going to take two coats of my custom mix on this piece, but it will take three coats of the buttercream on the drawer. A piece like this has so many different angles that you definitely need to turn your piece while you're painting it, or you may accidentally miss a spot. When my second coat is dry, I'm now coming in with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. I'm sealing this up because we are going to be using glaze shortly. Now, I often like to use a satin or a flat. I don't like my projects to be this shiny usually. However, gloss is a really great base if you're going to be layering glazes or washes over the top. If this was my final sealing coat, I wouldn't be using a chip brush to use my clear coat. I would be using a sponge for a smooth finish. When my clear coat is dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze. I'm working it into the different crevices on the spindles, and this is going to give our piece an antiqued look without being too dark. So I'm going to be brushing it on and then coming in with a paper towel and wiping back some of the excess. I'm going to be repeating the same steps over the entire project. If you don't have glaze, you could always use a dark wax for this, or you could do a paint wash as well. Or if you don't like an antique look, you could just leave this step out. Something to keep in mind is that if you have a lot of brush strokes, glaze or wax is going to highlight this. Now, I don't mind that because we are going for a vintage look for this piece. However, if you want a more perfect looking piece, this is probably not something that you would do. 
I'm using a paper towel to wipe back my excess today. However, if you wanted to get rid of more glaze, you could use a wet wipe or you could further thin your glaze by using a water mister. If you've been watching me for a little while, you know I also like to use the Voodoo Gel Stains, specifically Tobacco Road, as a glaze to age my piece, but it just felt a bit too heavy and too dark to use on this particular project. If you wanted to steer away from the antiqued look entirely, you could come in with a dry brush and you could dry brush some white onto your piece. It would give it a much more sort of beachy look, or you could use a white wax. So next I'm coming in with some more glaze and I'm adding it to the drawer again. I don't want to be too heavy with this. I just want it to be a subtle antique look. Next I'm going to be using IOD's La Campaign stamp. I'm specifically using the floral with the little ribbon down the bottom. I thought that this would be a really nice little touch to go on the bottom shelf. So I'm inking it up with IOD's black permanent ink and then I'm hovering it where I want it to go and then pressing it down in the middle. Always keep one hand on your stamp while the other applies pressure. I'm then going to be using a fine grit sandpaper and I'm going to be distressing the entire piece. I'm hitting a lot of the edges, anywhere that natural wear would occur on the piece, I am going in with my sandpaper and pulling it back so that we can see some of that darker timber tone underneath. Again, if you don't like the weathered look, this would be a step that you would leave out. Remember, you could also use IOD's Vintage Textures stamp to distress and age your piece instead of sandpaper. I'm now going to be applying Dixie Belle's Gold Gilding Wax to some of the details. I'm going in very lightly. I've just got a little bit on my finger and I'm just hitting the round details on the spindles and I want this to look like it has aged and worn off over time. I don't want it to be too bright or too overpowering on this little piece. I'm using gold gilding wax today, but Dixie Belle has a lot of colors to choose from in this range. Gold, silver, copper, bronze. There is so many to choose from, and this is going to be your last step. It is oil-based, so it will cure on its own, but you definitely don't want to try and apply a water-based product over the top of it. And you can actually use this to color your hardware. To finish this off, I'm going to be adding a sweet little handle that I got at Bunnings, but first I need to trim the screw down to size. So I've put it inside the drawer and now I'm just working out how much I need to cut off. So you can count the different grooves on the screw as a guide to how much you should cut off. You then need to use two pairs of pliers, one to hold one side in place and the other to rock back and forth to break off the excess. Now that I have my screw the right size, I can attach my handle. And here's our finished French country side table. I'm really happy with how this sweet little piece turned out. It will probably end up going in my living room actually. It never ceases to amaze me what paint, new hardware and amazing IOD stamps can do to something that you pick up at the thrift store. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, share it to a friend, and if you're not already, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our projects. You can find all the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.